प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारिए ह नजर समीपे रहो अमारिए ह घनश्याम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhakto, all of you devotees, Jai Swami Nare. You know our daily life, it's full of entanglements and responsibilities and expectations. Sometimes we just can't handle it, even if we're just in the mere high school, or we can even say college. But so many expectations, so much pressure, so much responsibilities. It seems like it's such a burden that we need to get away. We need to go to a place to get some happiness. So what do we do? On our Christmas break or in our summer vacation, we discuss with our family and we plan a luxurious cruise or to get away in such a remote area or just go to our motherland, India. But some kind of other place besides the place that you are currently in to be released from those responsibilities to be released from those expectations and burdens so hypothetically you go to India and over there for a three week span you take a nice vacation with your family since you're a devotee you visit Mandirs of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. You visit Santos there. And after that, those three weeks are over and you have to head back. It's your last day in India and you see your ticket and it's waiting there at the airport. Again, when you land in New Jersey, those responsibilities, those expectations, all the burden it's just waiting for you to come back and sit on your shoulders proving that that temporary vacation that you resolved as happiness that you calculated as happiness was just for a momentary time of three weeks but what if I told you that there's one place where there is everlasting happiness, where there is no kind of, you can say, pain. Yes, there is responsibilities that we have to take care of in the world. There are different, different tasks that you have to perform in the world. But beyond everything, your heart stays cool and calm full of bliss but getting back on topic what if I told you there is one place that there's everlasting happiness what do I mean well let me just read a small paragraph from the Vachnamrut Shruji Maharaj's own speech his divine words let's see what he has to say and I think after I read this, you'll pick it up very quickly. In Vachnamrut, Gurdra, 1st chapter, 12th, Maharaj states, The abode of God 
is without a beginning and without an end. It's divine, infinite, indivisible, invisible, indivisible, and it is characterized by eternal existence and bliss. I shall describe it using an analogy. You probably picked it up already, but Bhagwan is going to give us an example. Imagine that this world, this whole world, with all of its mountains, trees, humans, animals, and other forms is made out of glass. Also imagine that all the stars in the sky are as bright as the sun. Then, just as this glass world would glow with extreme beauty admits this radiance, the abode of God is similarly beautiful. Devotees of God see this in samadhi, meaning trance, and attain that luminous abode after death. This abode or spiritual haven is akshradham. Now, while vacationing with your family, it provides a temporary escape from worldly stress. But Akshradham relieves us from the miseries of the endless cycle of birth and death. Today's topic is Akshradham, meaning, as devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, most of you come or regulate with a spiritual organization where you hear about such words as Atma, Paramatma, Akshradham. But what exactly is it? What exactly is Akshradham? And why is it so significant? And what do we attain by going to that certain place? Now, Akshardham is a certain place, it is a certain area, you can say, but also it's not, it doesn't take up space. So this matter is very, very uh, difficult to explain using very simple words, but I want you to just imagine that you know how all those people in the world, they say that if you want to go to heaven it's up there now they're pointing up but where exactly is it do they exactly know no akshadam it can even be by residing with the akantik satpurush we'll get to that i'm just giving you and helping you out understand this matter and making a base a foundation akshadam is also a place where it's millions and trillions and billions of miles away from this very earth yes that's true as well and akshradam is also inside of your atma meaning akshradam is the abode or the house or the home of bhagwan swami Narayan. meaning just like how we have a certain address this temple has a certain address I live in this temple as of right now and I have suppose I have a job and that job obviously needs to give me some mail I give them a certain address 10 West Somerset Street Raritan New Jersey 08869 that's my address so that mail particularly going to me will only go to this address it will not go anywhere else in the same exact fashion Bhagwan Swami Narayan his home his address is Akshardham he lives there with his divine muktos meaning divine liberated souls and those countless muktos countless souls they are continuously extracting, absorbing, and taking the bliss of Maharaj's murti, his idol, his form, for infinite age as of right now. Why do we want to go there? 
Simple. This world, just like our vacation to India for three weeks, gave us temporary happiness. It's simple. Now, let me give you an example. In the United States, we use the currency called the dollar bill. Now, let's take all the dollar bills that have been printed from each and every person, each and every store, each and every business, everything, all dollar bills, and we put them on one side, okay? Make a pile and put it on one side. It's going to be in the billions, okay? And on the other side, we have a printing machine that prints dollar bills, exact dollar bills, meaning perfect dollar bills that are used by the U.S. government as of right now. Just one machine. It's not too big. It's just a machine, nothing else. You also get paper with it. This machine, what is more valuable? My question to you, the dollar bills, which are on one side, or the machine? Obviously, some of those kids will say, obviously, the dollar bills, but kids will say this, but smarter individuals will say the machine. Why? Because the machine can produce more dollar bills than the dollar bills that we've made a pile out of. It'll take some time, but it will produce more. And you can say infinite amount because of if you have paper, you can just keep making dollar bills over and over again in the same exact fashion. Akshardham, its bliss is like this machine. It's infinite. Just keep attaining bliss over and over and over and over and over again. And the bliss of this world is like the dollar bill pile. Yeah, sure, if I get a dollar bill from the pile, I, will, I can buy something and I will attain happiness. And if I use the dollar bill from the printing machine, yes, I will be able to buy something and also attain happiness. But once the pile that you have collected runs out, the bliss also ends or the happiness also ends. But the machine's happiness where you can continuously make dollar bills is ongoing process which will never end because it produces bills over and over again in the same exact manner akshardham has infinite bliss infinite happiness compared to this world that's why akshardham is such a significant place to go to just like how in the world we have the seven wonders of the world and many many people who like to travel and who like to go on an adventure they go to these seven wonders of the world and they enjoy it well what if I told you that there is a wonder of not only this world, not only this universe, but infinite universes that you can go to, you can attain, but obviously there is an admissions fee. There's a small charge. There's a saying, right? If you want to gain something, you got to lose something. It's a compromise. If you want to get something, you also have to push off and maybe give up something in the same manner going to akshardham going to this abode we're saying going to this haven of bliss we're saying it is possible but only to a certain extent of sacrifice is needed for each and ind each and every individual to attain that bliss which is forever which is everlasting as bhagwan describes in this beautiful vachanamru where bhagwan says that's without an end or a beginning. Now, how many things do you know in the world? You know the end, but without a beginning. That means there is no time constraint. Just like how Bhagwan is without a beginning and without an end. We have a beginning and an end. As of right now, I am 26 years old. I had a beginning in 1988. And when Bhagwan wishes, I will have an end but for this divine abode no it's without an 
beginning and without an end. Not only that, but it's divine. Meaning, something that's divine is completely opposite from something that's not divine. Divine, divine is something that you can't explain. It's more about experiencing yourself. It's infinite. Infinite. That's also something that the man has just came up with a word. Infinite. But have they seen it? Have they experienced it? No. But according to Bhagwan Swaminarayan, his own house he's talking about here. He's saying that his house is without a beginning and without an end. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been to a house like that? Obviously, many, many millionaires and billionaires have grand homes that are very computerized and very luxurious. They have all the things in the world. But are they divine? Or can they be said that this home is divine? Or can it be said that this home is without a beginning and without an end? Or can it be said that this home is infinite? Obviously not. That's why Bhagwan's home is something special, something beyond our imagination. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying, he is first describing and telling us about his home, and then he himself in the Vachnamrut is showing us how to pretty much enter his home. You know how there's a front door to each and every house. You need to open it with a certain key. Well, he's showing us a key here in this Vachnamrut. Not this particular one, but in the Vachnamrut itself that we will go on and reveal. He is showing us how to open the door, the front door, and live in his home. So, moving on. Bhagwan says in the Vachnamrut that Gadada middle chapter 59th Vachnamrut. Now here's the key because I really want to give you something that you'll take home and remember more than just stories or something that is just going to pretty much pass your time by. I want to give you the key to attaining Akshardham. It lies in the Vachnarut. And here we go. In the middle chapter, Gadara, 59th Vachnarut, Sri Jumar shows us that Akshardham is not out of our reach. He states, Only God and His Son can grant liberation. So when one attains God or His Son, then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the jiva, meaning soul. This itself is ultimate liberation. This itself is ultimate liberation. These are Maharaj's words. Maharaj is saying that we have attained God and His Son through our Puja Guruji. And through Him, we have found ultimate abode, a place of everlasting peace and happiness. Akshardham, we call it. You know, Gunatinan Swami, in his Vato, Swami said, maintain a singular resolution that we want to go to Akshardham. In truth, our association with our Guru is our ticket to Akshardham. Our very association, our very connection with our Puja Guruji is our ticket to Akshardham. Beautifully stated. The key to opening that front door is our Puja Guruji. You're probably saying, how so? Well, I'm only going to prove everything here with the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan's own speech. And Bhagwan says in the Vachnamrut, Sarangpur 10th chapter, that thereupon Sri Jimarat said, if one looks at the abodes of God, Goluk Vekun Svetu Brampur, meaning the abode of God, from a physical perspective, they appear to be very far away. However, if one looks at them from the Atma's perspective, they're not even an atom's distance away. This is location. More than location, the key is, Bhagwan is stating, God is forever present in my Chaitanya, and just like the Jeev resides in the body, 
God resides within my jeev. My jeev, meaning my soul, is the sariri, sarir, and God is the sariri of my jeev. Such a sadhu also believes that his jivatma is distinct, distinct from the three bodies, stod, shukshma, and garan, and that God forever resides within his atma. Such a son is like a mukt of Svetdip. When one has the darshan of such a son, one should realize I've had the darshan of God himself. When one has the vision of such a son, meaning darshan, one should realize that one has had the darshan of God himself. Akshardham, it can be, Akshardham is a title, right? A name. But, wherever Bhagwan's form is, that's where Akshardham is. You understand? Wherever Bhagwan goes, that's where it can be called Akshardham. Why? Because Bhagwan's home, it's not a fixed, it is a fixed situated place, yes. But, the main attraction, the main show, the highlight of Akshardham is Maharaj. Is Maharaj's murti, is Maharaj's form. Sriji Maharaj, we call Gansham Maharaj, we call him Bhagwan Swami Narayan or Sajanan Swami. The main show is him. Everyone is coming there to look at him. It's an attraction. Just like if a small child were taken to a zoo. There's many, many various animals, but this small child loves to see the lion. Him and his classmates, what do they do? They go all the way up to the fence. The lion is inside of his den. He hasn't come out of his den. But the kids wait. They wait and wait and wait and after 15 minutes the lion comes out of the den and right there and then all those kids their eyes become spread wide and they're awed to see this lion this lion moves from left to right this lion goes up and down a hill these kids eyes is completely attracted and completely connected in is completely entangled in that lion in the same exact fashion for this example all those muktos who are in akshardham they're completely connected and attached to that form wherever that form goes that's where they go they're completely he is the he is the main show he is the main attraction and in akshardham there's everything and everything but it's all connected with God. If you imagine that I want to ride on a roller coaster with Maharaj, a roller coaster will appear on your thought and you and Maharaj will sit on that roller coaster and go up and down and everywhere. But that's your wish. But the main attraction is Maharaj himself. Maharaj is Murti. This is the main, main show there. In the same exact fashion, Bhagwan Swami Narayan has said in the Vachnamrit that I forever live in the eight types of murtis and in my Kantik Sant. Our Puja Guruji, who is at such a level, who has attained that spiritual status, by having his mere darshan, by having his mere vision, we our self should have a strong, firm conviction that I have had darshan of Bhagwan himself. Equaling that we have already attained Akshardham. Let's reverse all the way back. Our life is full of responsibilities. Our life is full of pressures and entanglements. Our life is full of tasks and chores. What do we do? We resort to a three-week week vacation. After that vacation, we're back at our own responsibilities and we have no happiness. So, what do we do? We look for more happiness. Let me tell you, there is no other happiness besides this Akshardham as we talked about. 
And that very akshradham is a place you attain after leaving this body, but more so is a place where if you associate with such an ekantik satpurush, it is not even an atom's distance away, as Maharaj has said in the Vachramut. And proving that our ticket to Akshardham is our Puja Guruji. This is a long topic. So for next week, we'll continue this topic and understand that Akshardham, what it exactly is, we know a little bit about it. I talked to you on a surface level, but we'll go a little deeper in and we'll understand why the Ekantik Satpurush is proven, proven by the Sastras, by the scriptures, that he is, or he can be said to be the form of Akshardham. Stating this, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. Varnive Saramani Yadarsanam Mandaha Saruchirananam Bujam Pujitam Suranaro Tamir Muda Dharmanandanamaham Vichintai Dharmanandanamaham Vichintai Sri Ganesham Maharajani Jai Almighty Supreme Lord our beloved Gansya Maharaj, our path maker to liberation, Puja Guruji and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Just as Puja Ajit Bhagat has revealed the real happiness and real bliss of Aksar Dham in the form of your last destination, the permanent destination. Now, continue the same analogy, just as for resting or just as to relieve from your burden, your bondage, your tension, your uh, responsibilities, your work, when in a time of vacation, you want to pass your days in happiness, not only, uh, not in your own place, but you want to go outside from your house just as some flew to India in the same way if we want to attain a real happiness in our life a permanent happiness to enjoy forever in our life we have to go to Aksartam 
but not air india not united airlines not air canada no any other airlines can able to flew a passenger to aksardham there is no any possibility there is only a single airline which which help us to go there in aksardham and that is a uh, satpurush according to bhagwan swami narayan bhagwan swami narayan himself said in vachanamrut bhagwan said either the form of bhagwan himself or an ekandik satpurush can grant liberation let us see in the bhakta chintamni just as we every sunday discuss something from bhakta chintamni's parcha prakaran today we are going to discuss about 141 chapter of bhakta chintamni in this chapter sadguru niskaran swami describes some incident in which we can see we can learn that how a duty of god can reach up to aksardham in the first incident sadguru niskaran swami wrote an incident of duty who, who was lived in a village in north gujarat that uh, that name of the village uh, that was a uh, rajpur the devotee by the name of jaykarna he along with his family he was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and that's why he and his family members they all dedicated their lives for the worshiping of bhagwan swami narayan they peacefully every day perform devotion to bhagwan swami narayan and they all abide by the niyams prescribed in the shiksha patri as well as by the santo at the time now once upon a day this jay karna he was a devotee and once he worshiping bhagwan swami narayan's form in his home at the time he witnessed some divinity in his room he saw a luminous meaning a uh, only light light and light in the room he cannot see anything else but after a minute he can have a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan from that divine light bhagwan swami narayan manifested divinely in the house of jaykarna and bhagwan swami narayan instructed to jaykarna after the year meaning after 12 months you will be died this is your last 12 months and that's why whatever your wishes you start to complete your wishes now after explaining his death is near bhagwan swami and disappear after that jaykarna started more and more worshiping to bhagwan swami narayan he engaged himself more and more for chanting bhagwan's holy name swami narayan mahamantra and he tried to detach from his family his responsibilities his possessions his wealth and everything now when 11th month passed in this way bhagwan swami narayan divinely appear again at the time bhagwan swami narayan instructed to jaykarna this is your last month now what you you want to do start to do because this is only 30 days for you after 30 days i myself come to you and i'll divinely bring you in my aksardham 
now jayakaran is ready after this appearance of bhagwan swaminar from his room jayakaran has one desi- uh, one desire in his mind he want to build a mandir in his village so that santo can live in that vi- in that village and the other villagers can have also benefit of santo's preaching and for that he has a strong desire to build a mandir in a in a village and that's why he had no more time than 30 days so he call all the devotees from the village all the devotees gather in in a house of jaykarna he explained what he had witnessed how he got two times divine darshan of bhagwan swaminarayan and what bhagwan swaminarayan instructed him at both both the time now villagers also ask now what is your desire what do you want to do jaykarna explained that i have only a single desire i want to build a mandir in our town so that you all have a darshan of bhagwan as well as you all have a benefit of santosh preaching now he instructed i'll give you all your financial need and necessities even i myself provided you the land for mandir everything but you all the devotees of this village started to build a mandir i myself also help you in every way now the villagers started to build a mandir and after a month they have completed a mandir now jaykarna has only 30 days and the th- 25 days are over 26 27 28 and 29 now he had only a single day to live on this earth he talked to his wife he said now as bhagwan swaminarayan himself came to me and he had explained me that this is my final day and jaykarna explained and instructed to his wife now you engage yourself in meditation of bhagwan swaminarayan and pray to maharaj that you before me bhagwan swaminarayan came to you and you along with bhagwan swaminarayan went to aksardham now his wife is also devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan that's why she sat for meditation of bhagwan swaminarayan and bhagwan swaminarayan divinely appear over there with a divine plane and with bhagwan swaminarayan jaykarna's wife went into aksardham now jaykarna had a one day and in that day he completed funeral and all the other ceremonies for his wife now after coming back in home after the funeral and all the other ceremonies jaykarna again called all the devotees all the devotees of the village gathered in jaykarna's home now jaykarna explained the situation to all of the devotees as bhagwan swamina himself came to me twice and as he had instructed and as he had explained to me about my death now this is my final day and tomorrow i will also leave this body and went to aksardham with bhagwan swamina right jaykarna not only explained only this thing but he ex- he also told to the devotees that i am explaining you about this fact because tomorrow nobody can have a doubt that even though jaykarna and all his family was the duty of bhagwan swami and still how they meet the death and that is why i explain to you 
my death is not a normal death my death is not a death just as an ordinary person in the world they got a death even bhagwan swamina himself came to me to bring me in aksardham and that is why i want to ask you a question if you have any doubt or if you have any question regarding anything ask me i will ask my maharaj and i will give you reply back but the other devotees of the village they have also understanding of bhagwan swami and his supremacy his divine power and his divine attributes that is why they have no kind of any question or any doubt and that is why nobody in the assembly can ask a question to jekarna now jekarna explain my wife went to aksardham yesterday and today i also went to uh, i also want to go to aksardham but i not uh, i myself not only go to aksardham but i also want to take my son into aksardham and that is why he also jekarna pray to maharaj maharaj how can this child without his parent can live on this earth so please show your mercy upon him and along with me grace him to your aksardham and bhagwan swami at that time divinely appear over there in a house of jekarna and jekarna along with his uh, along with his son the van to aksardham with bhagwan swami narayan this is what a story how a duty went uh, how duty went to aksardham before 200 years now today even today bhagwan swami narayan's duty can have a chance to go to aksardham but at the time bhagwan swami narayan himself came in his divine form no doubt today bhagwan himself also came but without satpurush bhagwan can never be there on uh, at the time of death if you have a refuge of any satpurush because bhagwan himself lived and stayed in the heart of ekantik sant and that is why bhagwan speak through him bhagwan give us the guidance how to live a life on this earth while staying in a satpurush that is why if we have a firm faith in the words of satpurush and that is why we can have no any long distance to reach to aksardham one recently one divine incident happened in india before a month or two or puja guru ji visited our devotee home in surat the devotee's name was rasik bhai gondalia he was a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan all of his family also a dedicated for bhagwan swami narayan he was an author he had read many many articles and many books for our sampraday meaning regarding books regarding bhagwan swami narayan and his life and santo and his preachings he was a scholar now as he had read many many books of our sect he had listened many many kathas from santo so that he had a knowledge of our sampraday and he also knew perfectly how one can have darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and how one can attain ultimate liberation and and go to aksardham he had also contact of many other sadgurus of our sant uh, of our swami narayan sampraday now he had contact one by one the other santos and sadgurus 
one by one all the sadgurus from our sampraday they went to his home and grace him and they also pray to bhagwan swami narayan for rasik bhai rasik bhai has one desire he said i want to go to aksardham i do not want to live in this earth he had no any kind of problem not physical not mental not social not economical but still he had no desire to live on this earth he wanted to go to aksardham his question was why bhagwan swami narayan does not come to me to bring me an aksardham then all the sadgurus they prayed to Bhag- they said to rasik bhai that ah we will pray to bhagwan so that he will come to you but still he had passed one and a half year and now after one and a half year he remember our pujya guru ji he met our pujya guru ji before our guru ji became a sant meaning at the time of his childhood but after that he never met our guru ji now he remember our pujya guru ji and he sent message to our guru ji and he invited guru ji to his home now guru ji went to surat and specially visited his home after doing padramani when guru ji sat beside rasik bhai rasik bhai himself explained his story that he had a strong desire to go to aksardham for one and a half year he had invited all the senior and were famous sadgurus of our sect and all uh, and what they all have uh, what they all have said to him that we will pray to bhagwan but still maharaj didn't came to him now rasik bhai also pray to guru ji please grace me with your divine blessings so that i can have darshan of bhagwan and i want to go to aksardham this my desire will be fulfilled guru ji had a thakur ji his hari krishna maharaj guru ji had offer one moti mara to hari krishna maharaj now this moti mara guru ji hand over to rasik bhai and guru ji said you have some desire to settle your both of sons well settled in surat and in economically meaning financially and socially and everything now you have this much de- desire now if you want to go to aksardham remove this desire from your mind and when you have no any other desire then bhagwan himself come to you now i have you are not the person to whom we have to preach more knowledge because as you are an author you have read all most of the books of our sampraday and you have listened most of the kathas of most of the santos now you have all kind of knowledge you have no need to preach much more but i on, only want to say to you that this world is not permanent if you are not remain on this earth then how can you see or witness what will be happen in the life of your son your children or your family that is not the question and still you desire for them and that is why bhagwan swami narayan didn't came to you now rasik bhai was a very scholar he understood he pick up the point and guru ji instructed him now you start thought process and remove this desire this attachment for for your family and after removing this desires when you blank your mind you blank your heart then you pray to bhagwan swaminarayan and bhagwan swaminarayan himself 
come to you and you will be sent to an aksardan at the time when you have no desire and you really want to go to aksardan you yourself wear this moti mala which is sanctified by hari krishna maharaj himself now after wearing this mala if you desire to go to aksardan bhagwan himself come to you now after uh, after guruji's departure from his home rasik bhai he was very intelli- intelligent person and he was very very scholar he had all kind of knowledge of the all books of our sampraday that's why he started as guruji's according to guruji's instruction he started to thinking this world is not permanent even i will not stay more in this world then how can my sons my family members what is the meaning of my wealth and possession nothing what is this relation nothing and in this way throughout the day the next day he repeatedly think over and over again and he detached totally from the bondage of his family now he has no kind of desire for his family or no any kind of attachment and even in a night he also uh, in a night he also repeatedly think over and over again for detaching and for detachment from this family now in early morning at 4 p 4 am he wake up all of the family members he call in his room and he explain what guruji had instructed him yesterday guruji is a divine person he was not like us he is divinely present on this earth while staying forever in aksarda that is why he know everything or past or present and our future as rasik bhai had asked our puja guruji what is the thing which stop me to go Aksar, go to aksarda and guruji had explained him this is the point now according to guruji's instruction he rasik bhai did everything and he explained to his family member in early morning that this is my fault i have a false attachment with you and that is why i cannot go to aksadam now as a, uh, as guruji had instructed me to do this thing and i have completed thought process and i have no kind of detach uh, i have no kind of attachment with you that is why i want to go to aksadam and as puja guruji had given me this mala and he had said he had said me to wear this mala when i want to go to aksadam now i have no any kind of desire and that is why i want to wear this mala and in this way he had wear himself the mala of uh, mala given by guruji and as he was an author he had read down all the incident what had happened in his life as he had one and a half year he had followed the other santos till he didn't get success to go to aksardam and how how guruji explained him his fault his mistake and after uh, and not only giving uh, not only showing the mistake but also given a complete solution for his mistake and after following guruji's word how he had a darshan of bhagwan swaminarayan and how his path to aksardam is clear he had read down everything and after that he said to his family member now i have no desire i have read down all this incident in a paper and i pray to maharaj so that he come to me right now and as i have darshan of bhagwan swaminarayan and the santo and now i want i go to aksardam with maharaj 
in this way while explaining his death he himself go to aksardham with maharaj this is what the way to go to aksardham there is no any other flight in which we can go to aksardham but but there is only a single flight and that is satpurush now if we want to go to aksardham for permanent happiness for permanent rest or for permanent rest from our uh, our responsibilities our trace our work everything then we have to take a refuge of an ekantik sant like our pujya guruji and if we have a refuge of our pujya guruji and if we follow each and every word to our pujya guruji then we have no need to do anything else to reach up to aksadam by saying this jai swaminarayan shri ganesham maharaj